In this session, our IT conductor experts will share real world examples of successful SAP migrations to AWS using IT conductor, and also demonstrate how to leverage its automation capabilities to minimize downtime, data loss, and business disruption. And with that, I will hand you over to your presenting team, and Antonio will kick us off today. Over to you, Antonio. Yes, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Antonio Santana. I am from Partners team at AWS, acting as a migrations and modernization solutions architect. Happy to be here with IT Conductor. IT Conductor is a migration and modernization software uh, partner at AWS that will be showing us how to leverage IT Conductor solution to address common uh, challenges for SAP migrations and operations. Um, IT Conductor, you'll be walking through the end-to-end -end migration features from discovery and design to implementation in the operations phase. It's expecting 45 minutes for the presentation demo, and also at the end, um, maybe possibly 50 minutes for QA and call to action. That being said, I will hand over to Lin. Lin is the C CEO of IT Conductor. Very welcome, Lin. Thank you, Antonio. I'm happy to be here and thank you for your time. And I would like to cover today the topic of end-to-end -end migration automation. And that is an accelerator to help you transition to cloud successfully. Again, I'm CEO and co-founder of IT Conductor. And we've been in the SAP environment for at least 30 years. My background from system management all the way through migration. And today we'll present the platform and solution. So. This is the agenda we're going to cover, just a uh, quick uh, benefits of uh, doing automated migrations and then some of the features of the auto migration services, as well as the platform for doing the automation. And we're going to cover topics uh, quite vast because we do do end to end, not just a particular portion of a migration project. And then we'll have a demo. There's going to be a video recording of, of course, uh, SAP migration does not take a couple minutes. So we need to just do a quick video recorded demo of a migration. But then I will go into some live sections of the uh, five Ds is what we call our methodology process for the migration through different phases. So do some live demo there as well. So stay through to the end and then also we'll have some Call to action, if you uh, have additional questions, want a deeper dive or take it for a test drive, uh, we can also take some of that information and get back to you as well. And then we'll highlight the success stories as well as a survey at the end. So thank you for your time. And without further ado, I will go into some details about uh, who we are, IT Conductor. So we are a platform as a service, a automated cloud platform that we handle monitor, management, and uh, orchestration. So workflow automation solves a lot of IT automation problems day-to-day -day as well as long-term, increase efficiency of uh, service delivery. So as an AWS partner since 2014, we built our platform on AWS. We have validated ISV for modernization and migration, as well as RDS and also a SaaS marketplace uh, vendor on AWS. So how does our automation migration services work? Our platform is patented platform. So we are built from the ground up to be a cloud-based agentless solution to uh, use many different use cases for SAP on AWS, particularly in this migration as a solution. Our expert has been in the SAP business for 30 years, and we basically simplify lots of challenges that customers typically encounter using an automation approach. So our services are online 24 by 7. Our platform has live connections working with customer environment from all over the world. Why AWS and IT Conductor? We are similar. We share common DNA. Scalability and flexibility is built into our platform, just as on AWS. We have global availability. That means from anywhere in the world, you can access our platform and use it to orchestrate, automate your migrations. The integration capabilities of IT Conductor is similar to AWS. You can plug in many different scenarios, particularly with SAP, lots of different products, solutions, platform, OS, etc. And we are flexible being a SaaS platform to be cost optimized. So you can pay as you use, 
monthly long-term subscription or by projects, consumption model, as well as from a, a SaaS standpoint. And our platform is highly available. We have 99.9% .9 uptime generally available all over the world. Again, working with customers in many different regions. And we scale our performance efficiency to meet your operational needs. So when we talk about migration, it's a long, long journey to get customers from on-prem to the cloud, especially if you are in a large complex environment. We break down most of the common challenges that we encounter with customers. The data assessment portion, which is typically the front end of a project, is used to assess and migrate what the project, what the cost, what the resources are. We use a APM solution, which is built into IT Conductor platform to do application performance discovery, looking at configuration from infrastructure all the way through application performance, configuration, etc. With that, we can use to provide the input to the architecture design. So most projects, most cloud migrations will fit into some templates, into blueprints for the target best practices of AWS. And then we take care of the data migration. So from a data migration standpoint, the success of deploying SAP on the cloud, particularly AWS, requires you to continually test, refine, so that you minimize the downtime, minimize issues and risk by repeating the migration through test phase and deployment. So we help you do that over and over again with automation until you can get down to the downtime window that you need for the business. Also ensuring the validation phase. Once you deploy it, it's not just migrating. You need to be able to ensure the performance, availability of the system meets the service level objectives of the application on AWS. So through that, we have our APM. We can configure, manage, monitor, and orchestrate, perform, and deliver the KPIs needed to meet your SLAs. So the benefits of IT Conductor Automated Services, there's lots of point solutions out there that does this and that. We do it end to end. We accelerate the journey from assessment all the way through deployment and operations. Getting on to AWS quickly lets you efficiently uh, optimize the environment on the cloud. And we integrate into many different areas of SAP as well as the cloud architecture, right? Increasing the ability for you to deploy on a flexible architecture. And we are a, a non-friction platform that you can plug and play as needed. So through that repeatable SAP migrations, you reduce the cost as well as increase the flexibility and agility of your environment. So what are some of the features that I mentioned? It's integrated platform. So we do from discovery all through deployment. We can look at the entire SAP inventory. We can go deep down and wide to understand the SAP. SAP resources and how they should be mapped to the target environment. We constantly monitor that data so that if any changes come up during the project, you can see those data reflected in your landscape that you are avoiding risk of moving something that has changed. So the lifecycle management is important as well. It's not just about migrating. How are you going to monitor and manage that on the cloud to make sure that it stays compliant with your SLA? All right. So with the migration approach having end-to-end -end solution at every phase, help you address the efficient project requirements. We approach as an orchestration engine, we use our process definition, makes it standard deployment for your best practices, blueprints, your architecture, can be mapped to workflow orchestrations that interact to various parts of the application through the infrastructure. So for instance, you can see a workflow can say, deploy particular systems or virtual machines instances, deploy SAP applications on top of that, and then migrate data. So throughout this uh, process, using workflow orchestration as a central core, we can standardize both the provisioning as well as the software installation, the moving of data and the configuration of target system, as well as monitoring and managing it at the end. Combining the end-to-end -end approach, um, we work with customers from discovery through deploying each phase using automation 
we see a standard saving of typically 44% overall savings. Of course, the larger the project migrating number of SAP systems uh, will increase the efficiency once you would deploy automation throughout each phase, whether it's discovery through the deep understanding of the application performance as well as configuration helps to put together design and then infrastructure as code development and this, this uh, deploying those through the uh, standardized automation framework and then managing that. So how does this look in detail? The first phase of many projects, as I mentioned, is the assessment phase. We use LMDB discovery. So our automated platform will connect agentlessly, talk to the customer inventory, retrieve that data, provide you with a detailed report. So this happens in a matter of minutes. Right? We are able to discover large, vast landscapes, SAP component level information, how each system is deployed from databases to SAP applications provide you the ability to see and visualize and report on that inventory, whether you're doing a rough order of magnitude to generate a bill of material for the target cloud for ARR or consumption model for compute storage, et cetera. This discovery is really fast, keeps the data live. So during the assessment project, that data is constantly getting updated. If the customer environment changes, it will automatically reflect. This is our level two. So once we go from discovery, we go down to distill. Distill means we break down each system in detail. We take the data that you have in inventory, we connect our APM into it. We discover the deep level information about how the system is utilized. This data is extremely important to provide you with insights into how you utilize the system so you can do a proper mapping to target cloud environment. Okay. Once you have the distill phase done, you can do the design phase, which is mapping the source environment on-prem to the target AWS environment. IT conductor from the cloud integrate into both your on-prem and your target environment through our secure IT conductor gateway. Once we've done the discovery, we can provide you that information mapped to a target blueprint. So we have a blueprint feature in IT conductor, which is a design accelerator, a help to provide you with what the target environment should look like. We can also generate from a blueprint particular information about what nodes from the compute, from storage, network, etc. So that's the design phase. Once you have designed that, now you have a project, you have systems that map to particular blueprints. How are we going to take that and map it to in terms of deploying the system and migrating that data? So what we have is workflow orchestration engine. This is through the develop phase. We take Git repository of most common templates that we support scenarios for. For instance, S for HANA, if you have SAP on HANA, SAP on Oracle, SAP on ASE or Sybase or SQL Server, different templates from the Git repo can be used to adapt to that project need. Every project will be different, how you deploy, how you want to architect a solution on AWS. This is a flexible way to take workflow orchestration and adapt it to various parts. You can see here, we have ability to deploy systems using Terraform. Then we use Ansible to integrate into software deployment and automation and move the data. We have complex logic that will combine various different phases and then beginning synchronization, whether it's HANA, SQL Server backup, et cetera, can be done through our orchestration. So the benefit of that is once you have many different migration scenarios mapped for your project, if from left to right, you can see that our discovery from an on-prem environment, you have the deployment automation. So you have these launch widgets, except basically I want to deploy systems, I want to migrate systems. Uh, these are the orchestration, processes that are pre-configured, you execute them by picking what system you want to target. And then you have the jobs that actually run. So you can do many, many migrations in parallel. So let's say I want to do a uh, three different landscape, maybe ECC, BW, and CRM. 
uh, I may be doing this development system migration all in one weekend. I can have a single person launching the orchestration. Those jobs are running in parallel and migrating entire landscape with minimum effort. OK, so we call this the deployment phase. Anything that's deployed on AWS, we have basically integration into AWS to discover the inventory of things from the VPC down to particular EC2 instances deployed on uh, storage volumes, and then we have full control. So you can stop if you're doing a test deployment, you want to snooze systems to save compute. You can stop them from here without going to AWS console. And anything deployed will be automatically discovered and managed through IT conductor. So here we have the supported scenarios. As I mentioned earlier, most common, most 80% of all customers have these environments, whether it's HANA, whether it's SQL Server, Oracle. Uh, these are covered by IT Conductor as of today. And the list is growing. So we do both uh, homogeneous as well as heterogeneous. So we have scenarios, for instance, if you want to migrate Oracle to Sybase ASE, uh, we can do that, or you want to do migrate from HANA lower level to a HANA that's higher level on target on AWS, that's also possible. Okay, so at this point, I will switch to our demo. This is uh, just a couple of uh, customers and projects that we've uh, worked on that's highlighted on also our AWS solution page. So on IT Conductor, uh, on our YouTube channel, actually, we have lots of different uh, pre-recording from our APM that does discovery and monitoring management on an operation day-to-day -day standpoint. We also have our cloud migration playbooks with lots of different scenarios already pre-recorded end-to-end migrations. We also have our infrastructure management, monitoring, and other operations automation like system refreshes. Um, so IT Conductor is a full-fledged automation framework that can be deployed to manage your ongoing scenarios. So at this point, I'm going to uh, play the pre-recorded video, just you can get an idea, and then we'll go into detail, uh, deeper dive on a live demo, okay? As with how the automation transpired using IT Conductor. IT Conductor's approach to cloud migration introduces the five Ds. The discover, distill, design, develop, and deploy stage. It covers multiple aspects of automation, including understanding the source environment, generating baselines, designing and developing the target infrastructure in the cloud, deploying application components in that target environment, and finally validating the cloud migration success. Now, as we begin the migration process, we delve into the discover stage, where an assessment of the application or source environment should take place. Application discovery is the process of understanding the entirety of an enterprise environment. IT Conductor leverages a multi-layer approach to automatically discover deep dependency chains among components in an application environment, making application discovery much easier to perform. You can also see more details about the system or application from the IT Conductor service grid. In this demo, for example, you can see the hostname and the IP address of the Oracle database we're going to migrate. You can also see from here the system availability and its utilization over a period of time, which now brings us to the next stage. The distill stage. This is where the performance and configuration baselines are generated. In a typical migration project, the common performance baselines include resource utilization metrics, such as CPU and memory usage. Within the same IT conductor service grid, navigate to performance overview, Filter your desired time range, and from this window, you can capture the various performance metrics available for viewing. Alternatively, you may navigate to the utilization overview and perform the same steps to capture the metrics you need for generating baselines. There's also an option for you to generate a KPI report, providing you with a more comprehensive view of the monitored system or application. The next two stages, namely the design and develop stage, are where our team of migration experts put their skills into action. For the sake of this demo, I'll just walk you through the actual automation template already developed for migrating an Oracle database. Let's get started. This is the process definition for migrating Oracle from on-prem to the cloud. As you can see, 
we have different activities in this process definition, like the terraform activity, Ansible activity, and the procedural activities that support running pl SQL scripts in IT conductor. These activities are connected in such a way that it resembles the manual processing of the Oracle migration. To give you a glimpse of what makes up a Terraform activity, let's take a look at this one. Here is where you define the Terraform script from the Git repository. When you click Go to Git, you will be redirected to the Git repository where the Terraform script is located. We also have a placeholder for storing the Terraform state, which is an essential building block of every Terraform project as it acts as a database for your configurations. So, when the Terraform activity is initiated, the Terraform state gets saved in this object. Now, let's take a quick look at an Ansible activity. Here, you can see that it is also associated with the script from Git. So, when you click Go to Git, you will be redirected to the Ansible script from our Git repository. Ansible also consists of configurations. When you navigate to this page, you would see the configurations to install Oracle and patch Oracle to your target cloud environment. We can modify these configurations as required. A process can also contain subprocesses, which is a complete process in itself, further containing activities and subprocesses of its own. Let's take a look at this primary server setup, for example. You can see that if we further drill down, you will see multiple activities inside it. The Get Database Log Mode activity is a SQL activity. This activity runs to know the status of the log mode and stores it in the object itself. If there's an archive log, it goes through this path, else, it goes through this other path until it ends. Another type of activity that we have here is what we call the procedural activity that can run the PL SQL script using IT Conductor. In a nutshell, the process definition initially provisions the virtual machine in your target cloud environment, installs Oracle, patches the Oracle, sets up the Oracle DB on-prem for the migration, and then sets up the provision server in the cloud, enables the broker on both sides, and then finally installs the app server in the cloud environment of your choice. Now, we're ready for the deploy stage. To start the migration process, click the run slash instantiate button here. You can type the activity name here. Let's say migrate Oracle to cloud. and the description here. For the sake of this demo, let's just type in the same. Owner is the user account on behalf of whom the process will use to run. And removal age is the removal time for the execution logs to get deleted automatically. Then click the icon here to initiate the execution. A message box will then appear to notify you that the process definition has been created. Let's click the activity link just so I can show you how it runs in the background. Notice that each of the activities is colored which should indicate their real-time statuses. Green indicates that the activity has been completed successfully. Orange signifies that an activity is starting. So here, let's try to click the activity, navigate to general, and then you can see the status here. Now, notice how the color of the provision VM activity changed to yellow. This signifies that the activity is now in progress. For the other activities that have not started yet, expect to see the color blue. And if in case a specific activity fails to run successfully, you can see the activity in red. Now, let's check in AWS while the process is running so you can see the initial state for comparison after the process execution completes. If you need to pause this video later on to compare, you may freely do so. Going back to IT Conductor, you can see that the log got updated. It's a self-refreshing log so you don't need to refresh the platform just to see the update. So going back to AWS, you can see over here that a new resource group has been created and here, you can see that the resources are getting provisioned. The activities will take some time to complete. So let's skip the waiting time and fast forward to the Oracle installation. Here, you can see that the install Oracle activity is now in progress.
You can also view the execution log to see the installation status in real time. Alternatively, you can view the playbook tasks and see the status from this window. You can do the same for the patch oracle activity and other Ansible activities. Now, let's examine the primary server setup activity. As I've mentioned earlier, this activity contains a subprocess as shown here. Let's keep refreshing until all activities are completed. While we do that, please take note that the gets database log mode activity stores the status as an output, so we can use it for conditional workflows like what we have here. Now, let's fast forward to the completion of all the activities. What we have discussed so far are the five Ds of the IT conductor migration strategy. Remember this? These are the five key stages that drive every migration success. But you know what? All right, thank you very much. I think let's go into some live section of this uh, demo. So uh, that's a quick overview just to get an idea of the uh, platform itself. How do we get started on such a migration project? So IT Conductor, we can connect to uh, your environment and discover a vast landscape of what's running on your SAP uh, landscapes. And so, for instance, this is an overview dashboard of what's all the different applications we support. Essentially, from this dashboard, uh, you have ability now to connect into what we call the landscape, right? The manager of the environment. So let's go down to, I would say, the AWS landscape. So if we go into the first phase being the discovery phase, as we deploy the IT conductor agentless uh, discovery, we will discover what is in the customer environment. So this is uh, a, a demo environment that we have in our lab, essentially all different products, whether it's Bob J or HANA or S4 or Oracle, SAP, CRM, whatever it is, it will get discovered. And this data is live. So you have two um, reports that are automatically generated, essentially will contain all the systems that is part of the uh, customer's landscape. So this can be quickly generated within after discovery about an hour or so. You have this information. This information is kept updated live so that if anything changes, the customer add additional app servers or resize the virtual machines, etc. These will reflect in this report. So this report can be produced, sent, email, exported, uh, etc. So this is the first level where you get the overview of what type of environment you are going to assess for the migration to get the scope. And then from there on, each of these systems then can get a secondary distill level, which is what we call for understanding the configuration as well as the uh, actual um, baseline of the systems. So if you navigate to these icons here and open up, we discover essentially uh, components of this particular system where they have app servers, database, hosts, et cetera. All this information is available. Uh, the detailed information about the actual technical architecture, the deployments of the if different SAP instances, whether you have five app servers, 10 app servers, et cetera. From this point on to get down deep level for performance baseline, um, you can click on here. And when the system has not been uh, um, added to uh, APM level, you will see the information shows up as configure. So for instance, we discover HANA system, you can press configure, all right? And using a standardized monitoring account, we will agently connect to the systems and start discovering the baseline of system. So these are all populated, okay? So we have this essentially environment for you to uh, quickly get the deep level two information. If it's already configured, you can just press on monitoring, right? This will get you into the essentials of that particular system. So in this case, when we go to uh, this particular S4 system, you can see overall performance information, et cetera, what we call our service grid, or you can get high level overview from built-in dashboards. So for instance, to understand the deep um relationship between this system and this database along with all these application servers and message servers etc these are standard dashboards that will produce and gives you a vital uh, piece of information about how to size system 
as well as all the connectivity or what makes the system important. So you have this baseline uh, that tells you how important the system is from an overview, as well as to do the actual de detailed design, whether you're doing a one-to-one -one mapping or you're going to consolidate app servers um, for cloud, if they are over-utilization, under-utilization, et cetera. So, um, Another view of this is that our APM understand more than just the physical hardware because we go deep down into applications. Uh, you can see here in this dashboard, for instance, once discovered environment, um, IT conductor has ability to do orchestration on say auto recovery of different scenarios as well. So you will have a deeper understanding of what the custom environment is and understand the risk prior to migration so that you can propose the appropriate remediation steps for the project, understanding that ahead of time. So once you get into this stage, uh, again, if we're doing a migration of an S4HANA environment, for instance, you have all the deep level KPI, whether it's the front end Fiori system connected to the back end S4HANA, you can get all the APIs essentially uh, mapped out, exported baseline, so you have evidence about how the system behave and responded ahead of time. So in terms of this KPI, it is dynamic. You can build it, you can get out of the box, you can just add whatever else you're interested in, for instance, utilization, et cetera, all along this line here. Okay, so for instance, in this particular case, if you are interested in looking at particular system uh, and how it works as part of like any problems that you may want to note for the migration, you can get that information. I'll actually have one here already, I believe. I will click into it. So you go into here, there's lots of areas highlighted red, yellow. We have the single click health, which is a deeper dive onto the system itself. And you want to understand if you're doing a migration mapping, you don't just want to move it without understanding that, that potentially there has problems, bottlenecks at say nighttime processing might be an issue. Maybe it ran out of memory. Maybe you need to configure more memory for a target environment. In IT Conductor, the Health Explorer automates finding these things so that you can identify how to address the design of the system. So for instance, we clicked on uh, something in the past uh, at one o'clock uh, on the 13th. It automatically highlights everything that we've discovered in terms of all of the metrics and KPIs, as well as anything exception. So you can see scrolling down, it highlights a couple areas where potentially, so you see here there's a CPU utilization on the HANA node itself that reach 100%. So while you're looking at this, instead of looking at static data where you might miss the peaks in processing, and therefore you might undersize the target system just because you're looking at something that may be only 50% utilized, you should be getting this kind of data over hours or days or even weeks or months, depending on how long of a time frame you want to size the system for. So in this case, you actually get down to a level where you can identify the point in time and use this as evidence. And all this information is stored off the SAP systems, right? Uh, or even if you get down to a level where you want to highlight perhaps, um, you know, running SQLs that might have caused this. So we actually capture even detailed workload. For instance, you can see here SQL uh, statements that ran during that time when the uh, CPU reached over 100. So we get this down to not only the host level, but we also get down to the actual SAP systems down deep into the actual services. So for instance, if SAP customer is running multiple services on a single system sharing multiple HANA instances with different types of uh, services, you can see here index server, you can see response time, for instance. You can map out if the system is meeting requirements or is it meeting CPU, is CPU consumed by SAP or HANA or anything else along that line. So all of this information is easily available live into the SAP landscape that you are trying to migrate. Okay. So now we've talked about the discovery and the distill phase. So I want to cover a little bit about the uh, how we do the blueprinting, which is a design phase. So in design, essentially, we have what we call the blueprint. So this is a concept where uh, obviously once we've discovered the environment, so this happens to be the uh, SAP uh, system for S4 that we're trying to migrate, you have ability to drag drop, do the design mapping to the target uh, AWS environment according to the best practices. So if you're deploying, let's say, a high availability system, uh, for uh, AWS and you need multiple HANA nodes using clusters, 
you have uh, different HANA storage, subnets, etc. You can design this here. Um, we also allow you to export. So let's say you do export this information, you can get information that you can provide for the sizing for during the design phase, I mean, during the development phase of the actual what size of systems you're going to deploy, right? So in case this case, I want to do a blueprint uh, export. So you can just save that, okay? I actually have one already. I say previously, so I'll just show you what um, uh, one of these look like. So let's say we do the compute um, download. You get easily things like information about the VMs, how many VMs, for what systems, and what type of size systems you want. So this goes into sizing when you do, if you want to do a quick size calculator against the certified instances for HANA workload, um, you can do that mapping. So again, this is an element you can do drag and drop, connect and all that, okay? So this is a blueprint design phase. So once you have this, uh, of course, you go to the next phase where we go into what we call the live migration dashboard. So this is a dashboard that we showed you previously during the uh, presentation. But essentially, if you're moving from left to right, we have the discovery phase. This is all the inventory of systems. OK, uh, for instance, if you go into and you discover I want to count all the VMs and maybe their systems are uh, built on the um, uh, AWS uh, mapping for VM sizes, etc. I can go into seeing what are all the Linux systems that I have um, that I can quickly get an overview. So, for instance, on on prem, I can go into my Linux systems. Uh, I can get an overview of, let's say, a performance overview. You can export this out as well. So I want a quick snapshot of all my VMs, all my CPU, and all my memory utilization, right? So this you can do by different time. Maybe I do by hour. If I want to look at uh, actual peak over multiple days, I can change that, right? And this will allow me to export that out to CSV or uh, produce a PDF report sent to the migration architect to actually do the sizing and mapping, right? So uh, all of this information is available uh, through the central um, APM that we provide there. So once you get into um, the design and deployment phase, you're back into this console where you say, OK, I have uh, three scenarios. I may have a uh, uh, system on the SAP on, on SQL. And maybe I have a S4 HANA, and then maybe I have some other um, legacy system running on Oracle. So we have these uh, widgets. These widgets allow you to essentially go and configure. If you go launch these widgets, will connect you to configuration where you can override for particular systems. You can give names, etc. So these are execution configuration that we call, so that you can build the process once and multiple multiple time applied to different environments that you're migrating. So once you do that, you essentially launch the wizard and that's where the processes occur, where you have the parallel deployment from multiple systems. So let's say I wanna go into previous one I did before. So S4 HANA node, for instance, provisioning of all of this through Terraform, for instance, we are able to see uh, the detailed information about the actual deployment. We can also see what workflow process they are part of. So you can see navigate, so provision a node, install the node, right? All of this information, you have detailed logs. So for instance, part of the installation migration, you have to provide for compliance, the logs of the actual deployment, right? When was something um, provisioned, what sizes, what are the different um, uh, success of different stages. What application did I install? For instance, here we're looking at the S4 HANA deeply deployment. You can look at the task. So we integrate into uh, Ansible, provide you all centrally, all the different phases of deploying systems, infrastructure as code, deploying SAP versions, etc. So again, we can go into detail each of these phases. Look at the project, for instance. We integrate into deep um, project phases where we have our repository of multiple scenarios that we infrastructure as code deployment, right? From here, you can browse through, let's say, S4 HANA. I have all the different roles as support, whether it's clustered, non clustered. So here is an easy way for us to integrate IT Conductor into the open, 
orchestration framework of uh, automation. Okay, same thing with installation of HANA, um, the application itself, you can see execution logs. We get detailed execution log for deploying the SAP software. Right. So as an example, um, we can do an Oracle, a HANA, a SQL Server, all at the same time, for instance. Uh, we should be able to go into, let's say, for instance, uh, installing a particular step of, let's say, the Oracle migration. Uh, all of this, again, you have detailed information about uh, steps that were executed as part of an end-to-end -end automation. This one we show you on the video. Essentially, you have the workflow orchestration, right? Each of the step here, prepare Oracle, install Oracle, all of this, instead of doing manually, now you have a full end-to-end -end process that does this, connect the systems up, and then even handle the replication, install the app servers, and actually bring it up online. So IT Conductor, as soon as you deploy the system, we will have it online essentially available and you are monitoring that system right away in the AWS target cloud, as I mentioned previously. So you have full control over here to stop start. You can also visualize that through our APM and manage it from day one as the configuration. Okay, so I've covered uh, the, the uh, deployment, uh, the infrastructure uh, design. And now once we deployed it, you have the full orchestration capability. So some additional, um, Abilities, for instance, uh, deploying not only to run on cloud, but to manage them efficiently. So we have full automation. For instance, you want to do system stop start automation. We have uh, full built in capability in IT conductor to take down the application, stop the system, snooze it, because it's during the project. You don't want to leave test systems up and running and accumulate costs on demand. So if you want to do that kind of integration, we have full orchestration into all of this so that whether they're running Oracle, HANA, ASC, et cetera, we can actually orchestrate the system stop start. We can do it on schedule or on demand. This is all part of not just migrating, but managing that operations efficiently on AWS as part of the lifecycle management. Again, other solutions that we can highlight uh, based on our end-to-end -end support of uh, AWS, we have uh, our mini uh, landing page here for our solution that involves about full stack observability and monitoring. We also have full stack management of the cloud platform, as you can see. And we talked about before migrating workloads from the different phases. So whether you're just starting your journey or you're in the middle of it and need some help with accelerating the deployment automation, or you're at near the end and you want to be able to run through some validation tests, do performance comparison between target environment and versus the baseline that would generate on the source. Uh, IT Conductor is ready for any of those phases, all or part of that as needed. So again, this is IT Conductor solution, a cloud-based platform for agentless management and automation. And uh, we are ready on AWS Marketplace. You can engage us anytime, anywhere in the world and it work as a remote uh, management platform. Okay. So at this point in time, um, is there any questions to address here? Let me bring up. Okay, let me just flip back to uh, presenting the, I want to step through. So there is a, um, a survey here that uh, if you see um, the details you want to engage us on, I would like to invite um, folks on here. You could be a partner or you could be an end customer. Um, if you would please, uh, you know, fill out this information and we'll get back to you as part of, and it will take you literally two, three minutes to essentially let us know uh, any challenges that you may have or looking for solutions that will help you uh, address any of those critical phases during a migration project. And uh, we'll be happy to get back to you on that um, basis. Uh, at this point in time, I would like to come back to, let's see the um, presentation. Second. Antonio, do you have any any uh, thing you want to cover in the meantime? Uh, actually, I have a specific mm -hmm. question here, Lee, mm -hmm. with regards to the solution. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly, 
uh, how the integration with AWS services look like. Basically, for example, if you have a customer, right, with a specific migration and operation scenario, right, to the AWS that involves modernization, right? Mm -hmm. It's a specific service, right? For example, or maybe a different database or even integrating with AWS CI CD services such as AWS Code Pipeline, or if you have some customers looking for integration with CloudFormation as well. Um, is there any POC process that IT conductor can provide to the customers to validate the solutions directly within the customers? How it works? Yeah, yeah. So IT conductor, again, is um, uh, number one is to integrate into the requirement. If it, uh, if it is something that is the customer um, main pain point or they're looking for ways to integrate, whether it's a data thing or whether it's a deployment integration type scenario, uh, each one of them can be unique, um, but we are very open to essentially connecting with various different endpoints. So IT Conductor is built on AWS, runs on uh, technology that are uh, highly available. And so we are uh, open framework, meaning that we will integrate into what we call adapters for various different needs. Uh, so if we need to, for instance, you know, we integrate into things like S3 or into uh, different parts like RDS side or deploying. So anything with the REST API or open uh, standards, uh, we are able to integrate with API level. So we, we would be what we call adapters for that uh, to work with the technology that's needed to integrate a solution. So uh, today we do not have limitations into essentially application infrastructure level, right? So we can actually uh, work at any level that makes sense as part of an overall uh, solution. So from a POC, yes, we can connect into customer. Let's say uh, they have a, a um, a, a sandbox account that they want to try something out. Uh, we can add the sandbox account to IT Conductor. We will visualize, discover what's in there, uh, and we'll be able to then have our secure IT Conductor communication with that environment and uh, essentially uh, work on any of the specific integration as needed. Perfect. Thanks, Lee. Okay. Thank you. And again, we uh, we are part of the AWS ecosystem. So if there are opportunities to work on any migration assessments, et cetera, uh, talk to us. There are essentially MDF funds or the migration access acceleration program um, that we can also tap as well as part of that. And I'm sure a lot of the AWS uh, SAP migration partners are already aware of that from competency center side. So as an ISV competency from a modernization migration, we can also assist in that, whether as a part of a, a larger team or whether it's a pilot project of sort. Okay. All right. Is there any other questions someone to? Okay. So who writes all the Terraform and Ansible? Uh, we integrate into best practices. So if you if you already have a, some some teams are well versed in that, some teams are not. If you have a repository of things that you already use and you'd like to us to integrate with that, uh, we will integrate and and uh, you know either clone the repo and then try to make sure that it's what you want because sometimes people take inventories from other vendors uh, they don't know what it does um, until they actually try to deploy it. Maybe it doesn't match the storage. Back end. Maybe it was built for EBS, but you maybe wanted to do on, on NetApp or some other file systems, or maybe the size. Um, maybe you're scaling out and then and the system does not support that. So if if you're trying to build an S4 um, HANA with a, a let's say cluster HANA database back end and uh, the deployment automation that you're using or somebody's using is not uh created that way then then we need to adapt that so there's every single project there's at least i would say 70 percent of accelerated portion and then about 30 percent of adaptation to your best practices designed for that customer right so best practice is a word that's used generically but when it comes to every single sap customer no two sap customer runs the same way um, they always have an architectural decision that will decide how things are done even naming standards for that matter 
Okay, so you can bring your own. We can integrate with partners. And again, if we work with partners who are very well versed in that, we will enable them to leverage our platform so they don't have to have the Terraform or the Ansible jump servers, infrastructures, et cetera. Uh, I think conductor can orchestrate and automate based on our integrated engine, right? So that provides them a jump start in that process. Okay. Um, so I think the, the platform is here as part of the uh, Acceleration, again, there's some parts that doesn't make sense to accelerate. Uh, that's still manual, but uh, overall, we're trying to address an end-to-end -end single place where all of your deployment discovery and uh, your logs for compliance are stored so that you can run the migration over and over again. Um, again, our customers or partners who leverage this uh, can see clearly if I'm going to migrate 20 or 30 systems, I don't want to do it with 10 people manually. Uh, it's not very scalable, and therefore an end-to-end -end solution makes better sense as well as providing locks and compliance how the system was migrated, right? So there will be always ability for us to um, customize if there's scripts and things that customer or partners already use and leverage, we can build in. IT Conductor has full capability to integrate into any level of their database scripts or their OS scripts, or et cetera, and leverage those automation. And um, so from, from what we do from a migration, somebody did ask about uh, whether it's approved by SAP. SAP is OSDB migration, right? As long as we leverage the tool to migrate the data safely and we provision the system using uh, SAP's uh, SWPM, et cetera, uh, they are all compliance with SAP. So we never have any problems um, whether the data level or the application level, SAP does not care how you do it as long as you leverage best practices in order to build a target environment in compliance with the platform availability matrix and you move the data according to either database or SAP standards uh, and then you also supply the full logs of all the SAP installations etc for that right uh, so that's really the, the 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 short answer SAP essentially is is uh, okay for you as long as you manage the migration under the premise of OSDB migration. Okay, so any other questions I can answer? I'm picking up all the kind of chat here, Q&A. Okay. Well, I will encourage uh, you folks to engage uh, and, and share your experience. I'm sure, sure you all have challenges and if you are looking to uh, collaborate and work with us in terms of finding out some of the areas that we can help accelerate. We are quite open to that. The first thing I want to offer is essentially the first part, which is very hard for most projects, is to get the uh, assessment phase done. So when we get involved with the assessment phase, essentially, as I mentioned previously, there is no um, there's no friction because you can run in parallel and some customer might say, I have uh, SAP landscapes already, and I know what I have, but then if you are coming in as a partner to assess it, uh, you need the ability to quickly uh, organize your systems and get the baselines without having uh, to be on-prem with the customers or gather things statically through spreadsheets and documents and early watch reports, etc. Uh, not to say they're not important, but we do it in an accelerated manner so that you have the constant real-time uh, information so that you can build a very solid migration plan uh, based on real data. It's a data-driven approach. And once you have the data, you can map out, standardize it, and then orchestrate it as part of the automation play. So with that said, um, we have what we call our uh, public wiki. So itconductordocs.itconductor.com. Um, we talk about our automation concept here greatly as part of like how we approach automation as a platform. And from that, uh, we highlight many areas for migration, for instance, migration automation. We talked about a lot here, uh, but all of the scenarios that you see I highlighted today, you can get detailed information. Let's say I'm doing an Oracle to SE migration, uh, do an Oracle migration, a SQL Server migration. All of that is detailed. Uh, out here on our wiki, so you can see in details um, how it's configured and uh, the level of integration we have with the deployment framework, uh, different steps, etc. Again, it's quite flexible. Every project will take this, adapt it, and then test it, and then run it over and over again for many systems. 
And then once we have that, we can incorporate into IT Conductor for monitoring, management, and automation. Uh, besides all of this, once you get the system up, again, um, taking care, making sure the customer is, uh, is happy as an end user experience of uh, landing a customer on the cloud is not just to walk away as a service partner, is to make sure that uh, they're fully automated as much as possible. So we actually provide SAP automation as part of the journey, uh, making sure customers systems are, are monitored and, and automated for scenarios that can be so like i said before stops start maybe transport automation or file system cleanup backups etc integration into backup solutions maybe using it conductor workflow as part of the driving of schedules uh, we can also do that schedule migration schedule backup schedule those things centrally from it conductor standpoint um, one last thing, I think there's an onboarding um, as part of like uh, what we typically integrate with SAP customers environment. Once you get into the, the, the details of that, just highlight it's on here, I won't cover everything, but we have a matrix of all the different types of systems and databases and how we integrate with those scenarios as well. Okay, I think my time is up. I want to um, quickly kind of um, bring back this and see if we have anything else. So if you want to request a demo, again, uh, send an email to support at itconductor.com, fill out that migration survey, and we'll be happy to follow up with you. And uh, hopefully you'll get this video uh, in a free business day uh, or, or sooner if it's available. And then uh, we have a demo environment that you can also take a look at view only for the inventory of systems and how we integrate with them. You can also see that. But I encourage visiting our video uh, on YouTube. Our channel has plenty of content there. And again, we are on the AWS Marketplace. So I believe at this point, we also have the exit survey if you can do that. Perfect. Thanks. Thanks very much, uh, IT Conductor team. And thank you very much for all the, end, uh, the audience that join us today uh, as mentioned by by Ling, if you have time please uh, fill out the the survey it's really important for us to keep improving our services and apart from that i really would like to appreciate everyone for for this session thanks a lot thank you very much and looking forward to uh, uh talking to you guys for more in the future thank you